Let's bring you Base Building Basics for Clash of Clans, the five most important steps that you need to know to defend your village. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel then guys, I'm your host Juno Sloth. Now I got together with my good friends at the RH Base Building Services to bring you the five most important basic base building tips because I like to bring educational but entertaining Clash of Clans videos. We will be bringing you an intermediate version and an advanced version of this video. So if that's the type of content you want to see, I would recommend subscribing and also turning on the notification bell. The first tip is all to do with compartment sizes. There are different sizes you can use for different purposes. Small and compact compartments, widespread out compartments, they have different purposes and in this beginner video we will be introducing you to the most common so that you can get out and start building some bases and we will progress in the intermediate and advanced videos. Firstly we have the 5x5 five five tile compartment. Real Realistically, this is the smallest compartment you can use. It can fit a single defense. Moving along, we then have the 9x5 compartment where you can fit two defenses and this is perfect for a spring trap in between the defenses. We will be getting to trap placement, which is tip number three in this video, but this compartment can be weak to electro dragon chains because there is only a single tile between the two defenses. You can extend to a 10 by 5 tile compartment which would allow you to fit the two defenses whilst also a giant bomb in the center and this is also stronger to electro dragon chains because the electro dragon could not chain from one defense to the next since there is a two tile gap. You then have the 9x9 tile compartment size, which is a bigger version of the 9x5. It allows you to tightly compact your defenses to maximize DPS. You can hide a spring trap in the single tile spaces, but again, its main weakness is that E-drags can chain now in any direction to your defenses. The 9x9 compartment size can also be used to isolate a single defense. This will be a major defense depending on your town hall level. All of the tips here are relevant for all town hall levels, and you obviously wouldn't have it at the edge of the base. We are purely going over the most common sizes of compartments used so you can get an idea of strengths and weaknesses and start crafting bases. The 10x10 compartment size you can see is one tile bigger than the 9x9. It has the same advantages of the 10x5 in that you can hide giant bombs in here and it is stronger to e-drag chains since you have two tile gaps. We now move to the larger compartments. This one is a 12x12 and it's made main purpose is to house a single inferno tower. Not necessarily a single target Inferno Tower, it could be a multi, but one Inferno Tower. Now the main advantage of this is due to it being isolated in the center, the Archer Queen cannot reach this building from the outside. Now this is going to be the second tip we move on to in this video, in terms of how to craft your base to make sure that set buildings cannot be reachable for the Archer Queen. Finally we have the 13x13 13 13 tile compartment, which main purpose is to house a scatter shot. This is because the scatter shot is a 3x3 three three tile defense in comparison to the inferno which is a 2x2, two two. hence you need a larger compartment to make sure that the archer queen cannot reach it. Before we move to the next tip which is how to craft your base so the archer queen can't reach certain buildings, I want to give a huge thank you to the RH base building team for helping me put this video together for you guys. I am partnered with them, we have more videos planned, the intermediate, the advanced version, the best clan castle troops for each town hall level, but if you want to purchase individualized pro level bases for any town hall level, I would check out RH base building, the link for the discord and YouTube channels is in the description. Because the queen walk or queen charge is one of the most popular strategies in the game, it's important you know when the queen can and cannot reach a building so you can build your base accordingly. We will be getting into gameplay but let's explain in the basics with this beautiful image first which shows the queen standing in any of the green areas could reach the green buildings but standing at the red area could not reach the red buildings that is because behind a wall the queen cannot reach five tiles in a single direction or four tiles in one direction and one tile in another or two by two tiles they are the buildings the queen cannot reach so let's take a look at a town hall compartment 
where the Queen can reach the Town Hall from one area, but cannot reach the Town Hall from another area. So as we mentioned, it's five straight tiles in one direction, four times one, there's different calculations. But the way that I like to think of this is the Queen can reach the building as long as there is a three tile gap in between the corner of the building you are trying to reach and the wall she is standing behind. So let's explain this. If we draw a line across the corner of the town hall and we draw a line on the wall, then we have one, two, three tiles and the corner of the building we are trying to reach connects the wall the queen is standing behind. If there was more than three tiles in any direction, this could be two tiles and one tile, as long as there is three tiles that connects the corner of the building and the wall the queen is standing behind, she can reach it. Same compartment, but with the queen standing in a different area. She cannot reach the town hall from the southwest side. So let's explain this if we draw the line at the corner of the town hall, a little bit distracting with the balloons, but let's say the queen could step into one of these little pockets. One, two, three and one tile across to connect the buildings so a four tile gap the queen is not going to attack the town hall from this bottom area as well if we draw a line to the town hall a line to the wall one two three four tile in gap the queen will not reach the town hall it's why she can reach the clan castle only having a three tile gap to the corner of the clan castle and the wall she is standing behind however as the queen walks around towards the southeast side if we connect the wall and the line of the town hall one two, three tile gap, she can indeed now reach the town hall from the southeast side. Now this is crucially important when you're building bases so you can protect your major defenses in knowing how far they need to be away from the wall for the queen not to reach it. Now that we have explained the basics, let's show you some realistic compartments and a queen walk so you know instantly if you see a base like this whether you can or can't reach the defense but also that you should be building your bases to protect your major defenses. So let's take a look at the scatter. Can the queen reach it from 11 o'clock? I'd like to think you know from my explanation, but let's draw a line on the scatter and the wall she is standing behind. Three tiles within the compartment and a fourth tile in that of the wall. So a four tile gap, the queen can't reach the scatter. The Grand Warden could, by the way. Moving around to one o'clock though, the queen can reach the scatter shot because we have the wall, edge of the scatter, two tile compartment and a third tile in that of the wall, only a three tile gap. So when you're building bases, make sure the queen cannot reach the major defenses. What about the single target inferno? Let's draw a line on the edge of the wall and the inferno. Three tiles are shown by the air defense. Then we have a gap in between the air defense and the inferno equaling four tiles the queen can't reach. What about this little pocket? Could the queen reach the inferno from there? Well, let's calculate. One, two, three tiles and a further tile in the other direction in order to connect the wall and the corner of the inferno tower is four tiles. So the queen can't reach the four tile gap. When you are building bases, particularly with a single inferno, you do not want it walkable. You want to burn the queen's ability so now, with your added knowledge of what the Queen can and can't reach, you want to be taking that to your advantage when building bases. Now we move to tip three, which is trap placement. We will be going over each of the individual traps and giving you the best use for them, starting off with the spring trap. Now this can be used in between buildings, much like we discussed at the start of the video in the compartment sizes. Do not place them in random areas of the map. Primarily you will use them in between two defenses to try and fling hog riders off the map or in between two regular buildings to try and hit miners or yetis as they pass through the base. Either way you want them in a troop pathing route. You do not want them in random areas where troops are not likely to go over that area. For giant bombs, it is similar to the spring traps in that you want them over the troop pathing line. Do not have them where the troops are not likely to go. Now at Town Hall 11 and below, 
be assured that you want to spread your giant bombs around so that you cannot heal through more than one giant bomb. At Town Hall 13, it is okay to create a super bomb by having two to three of them together surrounded by other splash because you actually can't heal through it. The small bomb has two main use cases in the current meta. For Town Hall 10 and below, where there are no super troops, therefore no access to super wall breakers, you can use them on the edge of the base in order to take out wall breakers. That is why people tend to send in a test wall breaker. However, once the super wall breakers are unlocked, this method is a lot less usable. Now for Town Hall 12 and 13, where the Town Hall is a defense, the small bombs are currently being used next to the town hall in order to prevent an easy town hall snipe with the super goblins. The small bombs go off and wipe out the sneaky goblins. Now, if you are using this technique on offense, you can try and counteract this by using barbarians, which would set off the small bombs first before the sneaky goblins came out. And if there is a scatter shot in the area, you could put a minion in there to distract the scatter shot. It would fire up over at the minion instead of wiping out the sneaky goblins at the same time. The tornado trap is perfect for baiting your opponent and often can be used to battle balance out weaknesses within your base. One of the main uses is to bait a yeti blimp method to ensure the battle blimp does not get into the inside of the base where it is intended to go. You can also place it in areas where a queen charge is possible to pull the queen away from an area, or if you are using it to try and catch balloons from a lava loon attack, make sure that there is also splash damage in the area to best make use of the trap. Now the air mines and air bombs can be tricky, but fortunately we have this beautiful image from the RH base building team. The red air bombs are splash damage, so you want them to hit balloons, not lava hounds. For that reason, do not place them next to air defense or in between two air defense where the lava hound is likely to path. You also want to make sure it is approximately eight tiles away from an air defense so the lava pups do not trigger it. You can clearly see the red circle around the bad place of a red air bomb in between the air defense and the good placement with the green circle right in the middle of the triangulated air defense. Now the seeking air mines is the opposing. You want it to hit the lava hound so have it near air defense or at least in the pathing for the lava hound. Other uses could be in the center of the base in order to try and take out dragons or healers and often the higher level players will also try and place them in an area to bait a queen charge and pick off the healers early on. The skeleton trap is all about slowing your opponent down and you get three of them so you could use a couple of different methods. One of the main reasons you would use the skeleton trap is to protect a single target inferno whether that be from a queen charge or a sui royal champion in order to make sure that she does not get it. You could also place them on the back end of the base where a royal champion is likely to finish off. When defending a hybrid attack attack with the knowledge that miners attack everything, you can use the skeleton trap to slow them down over big areas of splash. For Town Hall 13, that would be the scatter shot. Notice the good use of giant bombs in this location as well because there is major splash and the skeletons will also pull the miners onto that area. Again, you want the giant bombs in the location where you know the troops are going to path over. Tip number four is defense distribution. Basically not having all of your major defenses in an area of the base making you susceptible to a kill squad of some sort. We have tiered systems which I will go over to help you out and also I will be bringing up images to showcase good base distribution. Now if you do want to discuss any of this further with me you can always drop by my live streams on Twitch. The link for that is in the description but let's go over the tier systems with you guys. So tier 1 defenses, your major defenses are your clan castle, the inferno towers at town hall 10, the eagle artillery town hall 11, the town hall at town hall 12 and 13, and the scatter shots at town hall 13. Do not have more than one 
tier one defense in a single compartment. If you do, you are likely providing too much value for your opponent. Now, this is the beginner basics base building video. There could be discrepancies in more of the intermediate advanced versions if you are trying to bait certain strategies. Your tier two defenses. These are a step down from your major defenses, which are tier one. You could put tier two defenses in the same compartment as a tier one defense as long as you made sure you were not providing too much value. The defenses on this list are the Archer Queen, the Expos, your Air Sweepers, and your other heroes. In general, the tier one and two defenses should be spread quite evenly across the base. And you have seen a couple of images just flashing up on the screen, which clearly demonstrates this. Tip number five is trash building placement. Yes, you heard me right. Your trash buildings, the non-defense buildings, are not just an afterthought that you throw into the base. You want to carefully use them to make funneling difficult. Think about when you are attacking a base. The first part of your plan is how do I set the funnel to enter the base? That is the purpose of the trash buildings. I also have some gameplay coming up to make sure you are not susceptible to e-drags or bowlers, but the guys at the RH base building team gave me some great advice, so I will try and explain it as simply as I can. Normally, people will enter the base at a flat side. It's rare people enter the corner. Now, where someone is likely to enter the base, let's say into this single, whether it be with a queen charge or with yetis, you want to make sure to have less buildings and also the less HP buildings. That means that there is less buildings to draw the troops in, and also it means you then have your higher HP buildings and more buildings to use next to it where the attacker has to funnel. So in this example, the attacker would have to funnel all the buildings to the left and all the buildings to the right in order to enter where they wanted. That is why the trash buildings are very important. Now, this is something that will be difficult. You will have to take a little bit of practice and care with, but that's why I reached out to the RH base building team as well to help me with this video. Now, when you are setting up your trash buildings, just make sure that you are conscious of how easy the Electro Dragon could funnel for an area. If you have a lot of buildings, high HP buildings, they're very close together within one tile, an E-Drag might be able to chain directly through them. So by placing them two tiles apart, you are making sure that you are not susceptible to your attacker using the E-Drag to get huge value. The other thing to be aware of when placing your trash buildings is not to leave yourself susceptible to the bowler bounce. This is because the bowlers can create a fantastic funnel bouncing multiple buildings and taking out two layers of trash buildings. So try not to place your buildings in this way, but if you're placing multiple layers, it might be difficult not to do so. Therefore, make sure to place the higher HP buildings deeper into the base. So anybody trying to bounce the lower HP buildings will not be able to take out the higher buildings and it will mean the baller has to redirect. Now, I hope you found this one helpful. Be sure to share some love with RH Base Building in the comments. I think my Queen Walk Guide video will be useful for you guys. We talked about the Queen a lot in this video, so be sure to check that one out. Be sure to subscribe to see my other base building videos in collaboration with RH coming up. You guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video.